what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. So when I was leaving here yesterday, um, Taylor, you, you, you told me that Camorian Pimpton had entered the transfer portal. And um, uh, you were you you were you were surprised. Yes, am I? I don't want to put words in your mouth. You not, seemed perplexed or surprised. Not, not surprised at the LSU standpoint. A surprise for the Pimpton standpoint of this. Like he should be in line for a decent amount of snaps next year. No Mason Taylor. You haven't really. You haven't. I mean, as of right now, you have not signed a tight end out of the transfer portal yet. So. Yeah. And it's just a little. It was just a little odd to me. Uh, I didn't it expect is. it. Now I maybe would have expected it after the portal closed and see what LSU did. Now it's a little weird. So this is what I would say: is that um, you are correct in that if you look at Pimpton's, like let's just say that you're thinking transfer portal for things like playing time, production, all that, right? And if you look at Pimpton's uh, story this year, then the timing is a bit odd. Because, yes, was he buried behind Mason Taylor for much of the year? Yes. But he started to come on at the end, obviously, right? Culminating in two really big catches um, in that final game. So easily the best game that he had had yet. And to your point, Mason Taylor announces he's going to the NFL. Uh, the path to the field for Kamora and Pimpton seemed wide open. So why then did he do this? And that's where um, what I realized when you told me this yesterday is like, I was just like, yeah, okay, sure. Because like you cannot hit me with a player hitting the portal right now, that will surprise me because of kind of the greater economic forces at play, right? Even if you don't, and and look, this could be, you know, maybe Pimpton's like unhappy. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it is that simple. He's unhappy. He, he still wants to play more. He wants to get out of here. He doesn't like it. Like it could be a million reasons. But there is also the reality that we're in this kind of a gold rush, right? Where although it's up in the air as to, what will happen after the settlement. Um, a lot of people are planning as if uh, collectives will be going away and they have to spend all this money right now. There's an argument to be made that you should almost, even if you don't want to leave, you just hit the portal, negotiate, see what's out there, and then maybe you end up staying or maybe you end up going somewhere else. So, like, if, if you're telling me a player hits the portal right now, I'm just saying, yeah, okay, for, for sure. I mean, they're just trying to get in on the gold rush of – uh, December 2024. This might have been he had a conversation with LSU and didn't like what he heard. Yeah, it, could be, it, could, be, it could be any of that. Because he could have heard that LSU is going after multiple tight ends, multiple veteran tight ends. They have True. a signing class that includes a tight end. Um, look, Pimpton did have two catches in the Oklahoma game, but also he was really poor in the run game this mm, year. Yeah. And that might have been something they had a conversation with him about. He's kind of stuck in no man's land. He's not a Y. He's not an F. So there could be a thousand different reasons why this happened. Now, if LSU doesn't sign two veteran tight ends, then that theory is out the window. Yeah. But now we have to wait and see because I believe that's maybe a portion of it. You already had one on campus. Looks like you might have another that's going to visit that's in the portal. Who came on campus already? I mean, didn't – or at least set it up, right? Uh, Tate, Eli? that you telling us yesterday when has on campus or at least scheduled to come? He's scheduled to come. On campus? Who's okay. Stowers? Who are we talking about? No, from uh, from Arkansas. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, and then what's – and then Eli Stowers is in the uh, – from Vanderbilt. He's in the transfer portal as well, right? Or did, my, did, I, did I make that I up? haven't seen that one. Oh, okay, okay. That, 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 that's on me. I mean, again, there's now, so many names his coming cousin across. Sharp that threw the pass is in the portal as well. Oh, okay. And he played go. at Southeastern, so there's a tie to Louisiana. Okay. But my point is there's, there's multiple tight ends that are veteran tight ends in the portal. You've already been attached to a couple as far as getting a visit, having a conversation. And so, like, if you don't bring in at least two of those players – then, I, you know, for me and, and the way I'm viewing this, it's a different conversation, but I do think that's probably a portion of it. Uh, you also have Trey Des Green, that's kind of the wild card as well. So, uh, yeah, so uh, Pimpton in the portal, as Jake said, though, I think even before Pimpton was in the portal, uh, as Jake laid out uh, earlier in the uh, earlier in kind of our roster evaluation, going after veteran tight ends was going to be one of the premier uh, goals of LSU. And uh, this just maybe puts 
extra emphasis on what they were already going to do. Uh, there is a familiar name in the portal, in the place tied in, that might want to come home, guys. Yep. I see you shaking your head, Taylor. He was once the highest, was it the highest rated recruit or the highest rated tight end of highest all time? Highest rated tight end, tight end of all time, yeah. Oh, Rick Gilbert is back in the portal, guys. What do we think? No. He's leaving Nebraska. No? No. Second chances? Flyer? Take a shot? I mean, he's had, you know, he's had multiple chances. And he's had a lot of chances. I mean, obviously, the the break-ins to the vape shops, there was two of those. I mean, so it's not, and that's not even me being fine. That's, that's on the field and off the field. He's, he's struggling with some real right. mental um, mental health issues. Yeah, and, sure. and we had those conversations when he was here as a player. I'll be honest with you, I, I wasn't sure that he was in a position to play football yeah. moving forward. Yeah. That was kind of what I thought yesterday, or what I thought as well, and then I saw that yesterday his name hit the transfer portal. That would be, I mean, again, I don't think it re- else she's going to realistically pursue it, but that would be an incredible comeback tale if he could finally uh, work through some of his problems, be able to find success, you know, uh, academically so that he could be eligible and, and, and take advantage of that unreal physical skill set that he has, and, and and you know, again, I don't think else he's gonna do it, but he's in the port. I hope that somebody, I, I don't, I don't believe it will, but I hope against hope that some way uh, he will find his way. Um, does else you need to be looking at a quarterback out of the portal? Yeah, you do. Well, I've got another name for you. Come on home, the portal god himself, T.J. Finley, back in the portal, guys. He's played for L. He started games at all these places too: LSU, Auburn, Texas State, Western Kentucky, and my man's is now going to a fifth school in his sixth season in 2025. Only a redshirt junior, still too, Jake. There's no way we can push this thing to seven. Yeah, it's it, it, he what? will be a redshirt junior, uh, or the, the redshirt junior will be playing his sixth season, 25. So I think that should be his senior year. But either way, T.J. Finley could push this thing to six schools unless he maybe wants to come back here at LSU. I mean, his first year was 2020, which didn't count. Yep. Where does the sixth year come into play? Uh, he I guess he a- redshirted this year because he only played uh, what, like, he might have redshirted, I'm guessing, because I, th- I think I read that he only started like two games for Western Kentucky, maybe three, and then I think he got benched. Remember, he had, like, great numbers at Texas State. They tried to turn it off. Didn't really, he redshirted somewhere along the line, I okay. while still starting at least one game that year. So, uh, if you talking about, I mean, we used to talk about JT Daniels. I mean, how about TJ Finley's man cake, dude? JT Daniels. He's got a lot of fun jerseys up. LSU, Auburn, Tech State, Western Kentucky. Who's going to be the fifth TJ Finley jersey in the man cave? That's what I want to know. At this point, does he feel like... Um, I'm going to say it's going to be Louisiana Monroe. Oh, hell yeah, right? I mean, uh, uh, General Booty hitting the portal? Yeah. I see Booty was kind of whatever. He wasn't the strength of that team. I'm not, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go that far. I'm saying it was not the right the there for you. I'm not going to go it's far. all you like to do is know, find the, ways the, the, to the have booty. I'm puns. just trying to be nice to the Booty family, dude. I, yeah, 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 I mean, they're my, all my boys. But booty was a little booty. Hey, there you go. I mean, it was right there for you. The running back was, was the key to ULM success, and he's in the portal as well. Yeah, he because had a visit to Ole Miss, I think, over the last couple of days. You know what's lame? Darian Mensa, uh, of course, is in the portal. Visiting Duke yesterday. And, like, I, if Mensa was going to transfer, I wanted him to go to one of the big dogs, right? Like, uh, like, Duke, like at least, like... Duke go, had nine wins on the season. I, yeah, Duke's fine. Duke's not... I, I want him to go to one of the big dogs. Duke, Duke's good. But, but Well, obviously, they they believe... And it's Manny Diaz there right now. Yeah. They believe in Manny, what he's doing, because word on the street is Duke's offering Mensa a million. And that's, <laughs> what, that's what his representation wants. Uh, hasn't wanted. The, the, he's represented by Young Money, and they've been saying, "Yeah, he's a, he's a seven figure player." And, and as you said, Minta, um, single mother, raised him and his two siblings, acupuncture salary, grinding, grinding for these kids, and now Minta has an awesome opportunity to um to 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 set his family up way earlier than you normally could, um, 
in the past. So I'm happy for him on a personal level. I would just like to see him at uh, at, at at one of the bigger guys. Yeah, but so we'll you're see. saying if he leaves the green wave, you don't want him to leave for Duke. It feels a little lateral. I know it's not. You're going to the ACC, nine wins, like you said. But from a brand standpoint, it feels a little lateral. Because Tulane's been awesome. And I'm a little surprised that Tulane can't come up with a million dollars for him. Which sounds crazy. But maybe Tulane just doesn't care as much. We I mean, imagine that. Not not caring about football to the point where you financially yeah. stress yourself out. And I mean, that, that sounds insane. <laughs> Think how much these numbers have, have gone up this yeah. year. Yeah. I mean, so a million dollars would have been twice the amount of the highest paid LSU player from last year. Yeah. Now, LSU definitely on the cheap side, but yeah. And I'm hearing those numbers for players that you would know, you would know, but like an, a fan of a team in, in the SEC and a player that's out of the SEC would have no idea who he was. Like, and, I'm, and you're hearing crazy numbers for, for players that like the average fan would have no idea who he is, where he is, who he plays for, what position he plays. And you're hearing like 650. Um, it's because, Jake... I don't know why it is. I'm just saying it's. Well, it's 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 because though. It's proven to be successful everywhere else, right? Look at all the teams that had the best years out of the big yeah. boys. Are all the teams that spent the most? Um, one of my favorite quotes I've ever read: Mike Duncan, "Storm before the storm." Okay, a little Roman history for you guys here. Valeus Paterculus said, "Quote: It's about precedence, right?" Precedents do not stop where they begin, but however narrow the path upon which they enter, they create for themselves a highway whereon they may wander with the utmost latitude. And here's the key. No one thinks a course is base for himself, which has proven profitable to others. So maybe you were like, oh, paying a kid this much, that's ridiculous. I don't want to do that. That's crazy. And then you see somebody else do it, and they go to the playoff, and you're like, okay, well, I guess I have to, right? Look at Fran Brown in Syracuse. You think people thought he was crazy when he paid Kyle McCourt 800 k at Syracuse? Yeah, right? Or, or 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 all the work that he did to get all that transfer portal class? You know, now, credit to Fran Brown for creating that investment, for rallying the, the boosters and making them believe. I mean, my man's is getting washed this offseason. Um, that's a good. That I don't. That sounds bad if you don't know the exact quote I'm referencing there. Fran Brown just says he doesn't take bats if he yeah. loses. He don't bathe if he loses. No winners get well, washed. All time quote. I think he. I think he. He bays, but he doesn't use soap. Uh, I it, that was unclear. It was. Yeah. It was unclear as to whether or yeah. not waters evolved. Soap is definitely not yeah, involved. No soap. Only winners no get suds. washed. Um, but the point is, like, yeah, even Fran Brown at Syracuse, right? They invested. They're nine and three. So, yeah, the, it's if, if the market seems like it's shooting up, it's because the returns have shown you that it should. Now, you can also fall into a disastrous spot, Jake, and that's if you had a bad year this year because then there is no belief and nobody's going to want to give you money. I, I, I look at a school like Arkansas right now, which just seems to be bleeding down. There just doesn't seem like you have to believe in the man in charge to spur investment. Honestly, LSU's dealing with a little bit of this. I know some people who, you know, if you're not currently happy, maybe you're not willing to uh, give as much as you potentially could or would if things were a bit different. So it's just a fascinating time in which we live. But this is all to say, <clears throat> Primpton hits the portal? Okay, you know. I, I'm not surprised if anybody hits the portal. It's just what it is nowadays. And you just have to deal with it, and you have to go find answers in the portal. And honestly, uh it's not a bad thing. Like, it's actually good that you can go and get two <clears throat> veteran tight ends. It's something that you could have never done before, and you might have been in trouble if you hadn't been able to. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications we post every single day here on OTB LSU.